All right. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Okay, please, please watch this whole video. This will blow your mind. Okay, so I want to talk about Grand Junction real quick. I'm going to keep this short and to the point because I'm getting ready to get on the road. <clears throat> A lot of people came to Grand Junction. Um, everybody had their reason for coming. Uh, my reason that I had to come was because the Lord told me, I need you to get a canopy with a big red, with a V for vengeance on it and jump it with Michael doing a tandem. Now, a lot of people don't know this, so I'm going to give you a very quick testimony. When Michael Spirit called me up and he asked me, he said, Johnny, can you, would you do a tandem, would you do a jump with me? The Lord told me I have to do a tandem. <laughs> I kind of ripped his head off. <laughs> I was like, dude, hell no, I'm not doing a tandem with you. I was like, no way. I'm not going to do a tandem with you, Michael. If God told you to do a tandem, he told you to do a tandem. I'm not going to do a tandem. I'm a tandem instructor. So I'm not going to strap myself to somebody else's chest when I'm used to being the guy that straps people to their chest. You know what I mean? It's just too unnatural. And so I kind of ripped Michael a new one. He said, uh, he had told me, well, the Lord said that uh, one of the scorpions would manifest on my back. Now, listen, guys. I said, you know, Michael, I was on the phone like this. I was like, you know, Michael, and that sounds pretty weird. I got to admit, that sounds kind of weird, but I've been doing this a while, and I know God gives us stuff that sometimes doesn't make really any sense. So, you know, I did throw that out there, but it's for you to do, not for me. So he told you to do it, not me to do it. And so then all of a sudden you hear, I went, I hear the Lord right, right during this conversation. I hear the Lord tell me, I want you to jump with Michael. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm sitting there in my kitchen going, what do you mean you want me to jump with Michael? I'm not going to jump with Michael. I'm not going to do a tandem. I hear the Lord say, I want you to jump with him with your own canopy with a layover, like my flat eye wear canopy. And so I'm sitting there in the kitchen arguing, arguing with the Lord. It's like, well, why do I got to do it? <laughs> and so um, I tell Michael, I go like this. I go, I'll call you right back. I'll call you a minute. And I was all ticked off. I was like, dude, I don't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to do it. Yeah, there's no way I was going to do a tandem. And now all of a sudden the Lord's telling me, no, you need your own canopy with a layover and jump with him. And I was like, this is nuts. And so I hang up on Michael and I like, dude, click. And I call up Kat. I'm like, hey, Kat, listen, I need to pray with you. This is what the Lord told me. And so I throw it out there. I tell her everything. And I said, so. So I'm sitting there in my kitchen like this. And I'm like, okay, Lord, so here's the deal. If you really want me to do this, there's no way that I will not open this book. And it, it has to say, when I open this page, it has to say, that you want me to jump a canopy that's got a layover. That's what I said. And I was like, so if it doesn't tell me that, there's no way I'm going to do it. Okay, hang on. Okay, so again, I told the Lord, okay, then if that's actually true, if that's really true, then I'm going to open up this book. And when I open it up, you're going to prove it. And if it doesn't happen when I open this book, then there, I'm not going to do it. Because if you're God, you're, you can open this book, no problem. You can tell me what to do. And so I flipped open this book. And let me show you. I'll do it in order how it happened. <laughs> and I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let me, uh, here we go. So when I when I cast this slot, I was, like, I, I was on the phone with Kat. So I had a witness. I was like, okay, Kat. So I'm going to just... Ask the Lord, if you want me to jump a canopy with a custom layover and you want me to jump with Mike, then there's no way I can. If I open this book, it's got to say that on it. Otherwise, it's not happening. So here's what happened. I opened that book and it said, canopy layover. <laughs> I was like, ah, no. So, so now... When you, when you tell the Lord, okay, so here's the deal, you know, if I open this book and it says it, then yeah, okay, but you know, no way, otherwise. Now I open up an 800,000 word book that said canopy and layover. So now I'm like, oh, and then I heard, look, look again. So it's, see, layover, canopy, and then I went, oh boy, 
looks like I'm jumping. <laughs> Here we go. Canopy layover. And I believe it's right here. Stuntman. And to incorporate and to include with Michael. I mean, you're looking right at it. And I was like, oh, my Lord, he's not kidding. Okay, so now let me tell you what Grand Junction was all about. Faith, and I want to make sure before anyone watches one more minute of this video, you understand something. Just because you didn't make it to Grand Junction doesn't mean you're not included in this. I'll say it again. If you weren't in Grand Junction, it doesn't matter. You are with us in spirit. If you've taken one image that the Lord God showed his servant and you've shown it to someone else, if you've tried to minister to someone and say, look, open your eyes, the Vatican's a snake. You know, if you tried to help anyone wake up, then you're included in this work of faith. Now watch, watch this, because this is the Lord's ministry. It's not mine. He just uses me to do it. Okay, now, <clears throat> Michael was struggling to believe that he really had to do this same thing as well. So Michael threw out a fleece like Gideon. He thought, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to like ask the Lord to prove to me he really wants me to do this. So I told the Lord, hey, if you want me to do it, I'm going to open this book. It's going to tell me you want me to get a custom canopy with a layover and that you want me to do it. Somehow you'll do that. Canopy, layover, stun man. So now what do I have to do? I have to take the step of faith, start skydiving again, get a canopy with a layover, and do what he said. So Michael thought he would ask, kind of like I asked. You know what Michael Spear asked for? This is no joke. He said, okay, if you really want me to jump, then I went there to be a whale, a humpback whale. Like far away from land, like in the jungle, and nobody knows how it got there. I want to see it on the news tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, dude? Uh, and I was thinking, where do you even come up with something like that? I'm like, what? Did you just think that up? Did you just think, oh, yeah, I think there's got to be a whale in the in the jungle, a humpback whale, that's what it takes to get you to do this skydive? I mean, you know, I granted I did say I will open this book, but I mean, a humpback whale in the jungle? <laughs> so crazy. Uh, I want to thank Brandon for giving Michael this shirt so I could share it with everybody. Someone made a t-shirt for Michael because Michael got his confirmation. Let me show you that confirmation real quick. Okay, there's Michael's t-shirt. Uh, let's see. Let me view it in full size. There we go. Humpback whale found in the middle of the Amazon in mystery discovery. Uh, scientists are baffled. So there was an article the next day where there was, look, right here, the humpback whale. And so Brandon made this shirt for Michael. It says, the Lord told me to skydive. I told him... When there's an, a whale in the Amazon, he did it. <laughs> Guys, this is 100% truth. You can't even think this stuff up. So Michael's fleece was, okay, if you really want me to jump, there's going to be a whale in the, uh, in the jungle. It's got to be a humpback whale. <laughs> and there was. So now Michael and I were committed to doing what we had to do. Well, the Lord told me, you will do this V for vengeance thing. And I said, okay, because he's going to take vengeance on his enemies, which is the reptile, the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan. They're all the same. And so the Lord told me, this is the canopy you'll jump. He had me design it. He told me put V, and this is while I was designing it. He told me put V for vengeance, right side up, upside down. And so he was leading me here. He told me to look up. The, what the number four was in in which language. I was very confused. I was like, what does that mean? You want me to look up the number four in which language? And I heard the Lord say, what looks like a number four, what it means in which language. So I typed into Google, uh, Google Images, which alphabet, which, which language. And I typed it in. Let me show you what what that is in which language. See right here? What, the thing that looks like the number four is the letter V. 
Oh my God. And the Lord wants me to have V for vengeance on the canopy because in which language the number four is V. <laughs> you can't even make this stuff up. So then the Lord has me design the canopy and the canopy is this V for vengeance. And now comes the work of faith. So that's what I designed for my canopy V for vengeance v for vengeance and it makes a big red x as a witness against them and their system that they caught god's angels in because we're hunted for dinner and now the lord god is going to take his vengeance on them for doing what they did to his children so here we go so now let's let's talk about what this hall had to do with again i told you it doesn't matter if you were in grand junction but if you were was it just insane? Was it insane? The Holy Spirit was so pervasive, so prevalent. So many people had so many amazing testimonies. I might set up a site to where people can upload their testimonies and just make one long video and let people go watch it. Of The testimonies were unbelievable. People came from thousands of miles. People came from Australia. We had one lady come from Australia. Someone showed up from Brooklyn, New York, and the whole thing had ended because he had missed his flight. But the Lord said, incorporate uh, Paul into what you're doing. So we incorporated Paul. We incorporated Jacqueline into what we were doing because... Uh, you know, their testimony became part of the testimony of the whole thing. So everybody that showed up, showed up for a reason. Well, let me tell you what. I was hoping it was my last day on earth. I was, I was like, and I told everybody, I said, you know what? We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it's our last day here. We don't know. But I have to jump no matter what. Let me tell you something, guys. To find our LZ landing zone. It wasn't at a drop zone, which is where you take off from and you, the pilot knows exactly where you are. And now all the, the people in the plane have seen the aerial view. It's very familiar. We were landing off the drop zone an hour away from where we took off in an airplane. So we flew about 40 minutes to get to where we were going. And we found a 20-foot tarp on the ground that looked like a piece of little blue glitter from above. I'm going to play you the video now so you can watch what what we went through and what I went through trying just to find the LZ. We almost couldn't find it. I had to take a loop. When we were on our vector, I was like, we need to take a loop. I need to get a bank on that airplane so I can look out and see it. And you can see me diligently trying to find the drop zone and don't worry. oh no pressure <laughs> no pressure <laughs> it's like oh my god where is this thing <clears throat> and all we had was this 20 foot blue tarp and we're at 9,000 feet and don't forget we're already at 5,000 feet uh ground level we're at 5,000 feet so then you add nine on top of that and that's where we were at, you know, according to altitude. And so it was a pretty intense thing. And I've got, I'm going to show you the video. I'm going to let you guys uh, watch uh, about 12 minutes of video, even the plane ride. So you guys can see what we're going through trying to find the place. And, and so just check it out. But this was all a work of faith. And I say, and when it was over and I said, Lord, I was really kind of hoping that this would be over today. And the Lord told me, this is Hebrews 11, Jonathan. This is what you guys are living out now. Now you've incorporated Hebrews 11 into your ministry, into what you've done, into what these people have done, into what pe the step of faith that everyone took just to come here. So I'm going to let Max McLean read Hebrews 11 to you right now. Then we're going to watch this skydive. Then I'm going to show you some pictures from Grand Junction. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. So let me go backwards on this. Okay. Everybody get up Hebrews and uh, Hebrews 11. The heading is faith in action. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Okay. Now let's let Max McLean read that for you. And I'm going to switch this to the 
I'm going to switch this to the KJV. I just wanted you to see the heading. Here we go, KJV. Okay, here we go. And then I'll spread that out. And then, okay, now remember, if you've tried to minister to one person to show them the truth, if you drove 2,000 miles, if you flew from the land down under, I mean, whatever step of faith you have taken to show people the truth. By the way, Jesus is the truth. He's a spirit of all truth. So, y'all want to see Supernatural? Okay, let's let Max McLean read this. We'll watch a skydive. Then I'll show you some stuff from Grand Junction. Here we go. This is awesome. Okay. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. 
By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. I'm going to pause that so you understand something. Those who come to God must come to Him in faith. When God tells you to do something, if you don't act on it, then you have no faith. Faith, faith is like a muscle. I've gotten really, really strong. <laughs> really strong. Because now I took this step of faith and I was hoping that this was my last day on earth. I really was. But I told everybody, it may be, it may not be. We don't know. That's what faith is. What does it say? Even in Hebrews, and all and all of these, all these people, works of faith, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, not yet. Having God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. Because we are one whole thing. And when the last Gentile comes in and we're made whole, we'll be made perfect, one in Christ, all of us. So, by faith, people came from Australia on one week's notice, spending money that was money that they needed for life. They were chastised. They were heckled by family members. By faith, people left jobs with the Philadelphia Eagles and walked out of their job to come to see this. By faith, people traveled with not enough money to make it. By faith, people took buses to get here. By faith, there's all these stories that happened and people were told if you go to this event, don't come back to your own family. And they still came. And what did they do? They increased their faith. They became part of Hebrews 11. Now, I told you at the beginning of this, if you've ministered to one people, one people, one person on faith, showing them, look, the Vatican's a snake. Look, the virgin is a dead sheep. By faith, you're showing people the truth. By faith, because it's been shown to you, you're trying to bring others into the truth. This was an, a work of faith that was so mind-boggling. By virtue of the fact that I was able to find the landing zone is a miracle. Even though we have GPS, if you can't get a visual on it, there's no jump. I was flying over someplace I've never even been in an airplane to look down and look for an LZ. I've never skydived here. I was in the plane saying, Lord, I can't find the LZ. Could you help me out? So we opened the door to the airplane and I, I hung my head out the door looking with the door open looking 
And the Lord said, there it is. And we found it. And we made our jump. And y'all remember, what does it say? V for vengeance. It makes a big red X. Because their system is a big red, is an X. Remember Madonna at Cuevo? I'm going to show you those pictures. I'm going to show you a statue that's right outside the front door of the hotel I stayed at. It's the same as the Vatican. It's the same as Audience Hall. It's the same as Madonna. It's all the same. The Lord's going to take vengeance on the dragon, the serpent, Satan, the reptile. His day has come. It's coming. I guarantee it. Just watch the video now. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Let's do this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you guys watch about five minutes of just the plane ride, and then you'll see the jump. I'm going to pause it there. Let me tell you what happened. I was checking my... I have two cell phones that operate functions, one on my helmet, uh, the GoPro and the, and the, the my audio system. Um, we dropped the signal for YouTube Live. And so I was like, I dropped the signal. So I pull out my phone and I press it. It said 9-11 on my phone. I was like, what the hell, dude? So right when I check, you know, this this the situation, my whole screen says 9-11. So here we go. See it right there. I was like, wow, well, that's pretty fascinating since I'm bearing witness to the angel of the bottomless pit being destroyed. And that's what I'm bearing witness to. So, here we go. Okay, so just a little heads up. Uh, the computer just glitched, but I got it going. So, at this point of the skydive, we're, we, we were on jump run and the LZ was not visible. We couldn't find it, so... We did, we 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 made a loop. we looped it back around and you'll see me bobbing from side to side 
trying to get a visual on the LZ, the landing zone. So then when, once we got our vector again, uh, we opened the door and I hung my head out. When I point, when you see me go like that, you'll just see my hand point. That was the Lord showing me where the LZ was. And there's a big red X on a blue tarp. A big red X on a blue tarp. Now watch this. This was a miracle just to find it. Watch this. going to pause it just so you know what I'm doing I'm trying to get behind the pilot and I'm trying to get a bearing on both sides of the airplane because we have our vector and I'm trying to get the lay of the land trying to find the street where the containers are trying to get just a visual map in my brain so I can say I know it's down there in this general location but when you're at almost 10,000 feet and you're looking for a 20 foot blue tarp, it's like a fleck of glitter on the ground. <laughs> That's insane. Here we go. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause it for a sec. So I'm bobbing around looking for the LZ. Remember what I told you when Michael called me up and asked me if I would jump with him? <laughs> and I was like, no way, dude, I'm not doing a tandem. Then the Lord told me, I want you to have your own canopy with a layover and jump with him I'm like what before Mike went out the door you know what happened his tandem instructor went leaned around and goes you're ready to die and then took his finger like a scorpion stinger and went and stabbed him in the chest like a scorpion tail you're ready to die and then out they went now I've never even heard of someone doing what happened to Michael under the canopy the tandem instructor Michael has O-rings on his shoulders where you hook these hooks up as a tandem instructor. So you put these clips right there on those O-rings. That's what holds your passenger to you. You'll see them. Once their canopy was open, Michael's tandem instructor had him grab the brakes, you know, the steering control lines. He unhooked Michael's legs. I was like, what? He unhooked him. And then he was like, what? And then he hooked him because he's like, what am I doing? Because another spirit took over. Michael was right. The scorpion's going to manifest on my back. He told me that back when he asked me to do the jump. I was like, dude, that sounds really weird, Michael. A scorpion manifesting on your back. <laughs> it all happened. It was insane, man. So anyway, so here we go. We're getting ready to go out the door now.
Okay, I'm going to pause it there. Now we've decided we're going to make one loop and then do a jump run and get the door open. So that's where we're at right there. Okay, here we go. So let's do this. Here we go. Let's get out the door now. Here we go. Okay, that's me sticking my head out with my GoPro camera trying to find a 20-foot tarp. A 20-foot tarp from 9,000 feet plus 5,000 uh, ground level. That's it. I found it. It's right there. Found it. Now I'm going to pause it again. The tandem instructor, he was going out first. I was going out after them and I was going to open very high. But the tandem instructor said, can you be on the ground before me? Watch how much distance I had to cover super fast to get to the ground before the tandem landed. There we go. Okay, sorry guys, uh, things got a little glitchy. So here's this work of faith, V for vengeance, because God's going to take vengeance on those that sought to destroy his children. So here we go. I'm going to pause it. I want you all to see so you can see where this uh, LZ is. Okay, I believe right here is where the LZ is. It's that, it, uh, you'll see a little blue dot come into view. Now imagine that I've already dropped down three or four thousand feet at this point already by by corkscrewing down to get below the tandem um, to land before them. Right there. It's right here. There's the LZ right here. A little dot right there.
Here the wind blades are right here. The winds were screaming. There's the tandem right here. It's Michael. So this is our completed work of faith. Comes. There's some big, there's some big round winds. All right, woohoo! We got it. Yes. All right. We got it. Some nice winds today. All right, there's everybody. Woo party! Got the fixed sensor right. Okay, one second. Uh, those are some honking winds. Huh? That was awesome, brother. That was great. God. Oh yeah, we're good. That was cool. That's a lot of wind. Yeah. All right. All right. I was expecting no wind. That's why I sent that video up to it you, You almost man. caused me to mess my nest with you in that spiral. Missed the target by a long way. There's a lot of wind, man. Man. Oh. I'm gonna go get this all set up. That's the my recording. Let me see. I said get a sprite in the water if you want to I got a gator. Thank you, Ground Crew Jabani. Thank man. you. All right. We need for vengeance, guys. I think it's coming. Right. Having a little glitches. Sorry about the glitches. Okay. There it is. Now, I'm going to pause it right there for just a second. Let me let me throw this out there. So, this whole thing, the day of, the day of the Lord's vengeance is coming, guys. That's what that's what this is all about. Did you did you read along with uh Hebrews 11? Did you what is faith? Did you read about all uh, did you listen to through faith, through faith, by faith, by faith? By faith Noah, by faith Moses, by faith all these other people in the Bible, every one of us, that they should not be made perfect without us. Because once the whole group's together, then the whole group's been made perfect. And that's what's coming. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. Now, what's the big thing Jonathan Click showed everybody? Well, the abomination that causes desolation, the serpent seed within us, the twin system. That's what the Lord had me uh, uncover. The me, the the identity of Christ. He's with us is El Emmanuel. With us is El the Almighty God. That's why those wind blades say V for vengeance. By the way, there's it says L at the top of them. Let's see. There. C L E L L V for vengeance. Okay, so that's what this was all about. To this is an indictment to the enemy. The enemy's been indicted now. He used the things this world considers foolishness to confound the wise. So it'll stand as a witness against them now. And um, let me show you some things from my uh, Grand Junction real quick now before I go. I gotta hit the road. Okay, Rennie, here we go. Let me show you something amazing. Besides Mike's crazy shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Brandon. And th by the way, before I, I go, before I just go in, into these images, I want to thank every single person, every prayer, every dollar, every every hug. All the hugs. Every comment that was just uh, an electronic letters on a computer screen for me became tangible, real. I mean, I got to hug so many people. <laughs> it was so awesome. The Holy Spirit was so pervasive and just huge. So many people were manifesting 
you know, uh, signs of the spirit. It was amazing. It was just unbelievable. It was so amazing. So what an awesome work of faith and what a testimony that everyone that came has their own testimony now. There are just some unbelievable testimonies. So I want to thank everyone for every hug, every picture, every pat, every gift, whatever you did. Just thanks for being there. God bless you. Wasn't it cool? <laughs> Wasn't that just the bomb? <laughs> what a party, man. That was awesome. Okay, let me show you a couple things in Grand Junction that happened while I was here. So when I walked out of my hotel, when I walked out of my hotel, I, I almost fell out of my seat. Y'all remember Audience Hall right here? Remember this in at the Vatican that the side of Jesus' head makes this reptile right here? There it is, right? Uh, let me show you another reptile right here. You, you see this one right here? See the eye, the mouth? No, it's a reptile. Uh, this is just like audience hall right here. And then let me uh, let me zoom out and show you what what this really is. It's a statue of a woman hugging a man. This is supposed to be the back of her hair. It's a reptile. And this is the head of the man. They're kissing, but her hair. This is the eye of the reptile right here. The mouth. Now watch. Then it turns into a dead sheep. So what is the Vatican? The Vatican, the whole building, is a snake wearing a crown, uh, representing that the snake is crowned because this is his domain. This is his world. That's why Satan told Jesus in a moment of time, I, all these kingdoms are my, all these are mine. I can give them to you if you bow down and worship me. And so now let me show you what happens to this statue. Okay, there it is. Let, look what look what's on the back of the guy when when he's hugging the girl. It makes a, an X. Let me show you the X. See the X it makes? Now watch this. Let's take a look at that reptile from another angle. Wow, it's a sheep with its tongue sticking out. There's the sheep's eye. There's the nostril. There's the nostril. There's the tongue sticking out. There's the ear. Let me enlarge it. So how is that possible? How is it possible that in Grand Junction across from my hotel is a statue of a woman kissing a man and her hair is a reptile and a dead sheep and there's an X on the back of the guy. How is that possible? Because it's the truth. It's the only way. Now we know. We're in their system. We we're born into their system and they destroy the sheep. See the sheep? There's the eye, nostril, nostril, tongue to get out, ear. So these are in the show note folders. Well, let me just show you a couple of things that I did just to, just to show you. Um, I showed you that we took a picture in front of this church that's at, on the street, at the end of the street that the jump happened, and it's voice in the wilderness. See the V on top of the double U? And when I took the picture... Dave tried to populate it, came in upside down. Here's a real estate company in Grand Junction, The Vault. See the V and the A right side up, upside down? Well, look what's under the A, the two, like representing the two, you know, like the Twin Towers, male and female, uh, right side up you, upside down you. Uh, here's Mike and I getting ready to jump in the plane and take off and do our tandem. There we are with our tandem instructor, for Mike, uh, let me show you the big X right on the back of the guy that the girl's hugging, and she has a reptile in her hair. There you go. You can't, I mean, no one could even think this up. Everlasting chains of darkness, forward and backwards, ligaments of the body. So the mystery solved. No doubt about it. Mystery solved. The mystery of everything is resolved. The mystery of the Bible, who we are, where we came from, how do we get back? Now, y'all remember before I came, I was, I was worried about getting the tandem done because the, the DZ owner, he was really hard to pin down on guaranteeing us our jump. And I prayed, I said, Lord, you're going to have to do this. And could you please encourage me? I have a big red X on a, I, I was in my kitchen. I said, I got a big red X on a canopy to prove how much I believe. And then when I went like that, you know, I made an X in my kitchen like that. I go, I got a big red X on my canopy. 
the next day uh, I was running some errands and a strange set of circumstances happened. And I went to the grocery store to get a, a cashier's check for $200. And when I went, the lady called me up to the counter to do my business. And there was an old man there. And he looked at me and he goes, hey, you want to see a picture of my ex? It was really awkward. I was looking at this 85-year-old man. I thought he was going to pull out a picture of a girl in a bikini. I didn't know what he was going to do. And so there's a young lady on the other side of the counter. And I went, well, this ought to be interesting. And I looked at the old man just to see what's he going to do. Well, remember, I told the Lord, hey, I got a big red X on my canopy just to show how much I believe you. And this old man pulls out this out of his wallet, a white card with a red X and it says my X. Well, let's look at my canopy. Wow. That was the next day. So is that the Lord answering your prayer? You better believe it. Look at that. It's the same as the serpent system, the double-headed phoenix. Here we are in Grand Junction, the statue right outside my, my hotel is identical. And then let's look at Madonna at Quavo when she came up out of the pit. What did Madonna have on her? An X and an X on her eye patch. We just changed the color of it and made it red. This is the X Games for real. <laughs> All right, I'll do this video again. I had so much equipment problems on this video. It was crazy. So I'm going to load this up. I'll see you really soon, guys. God bless. Thank you for showing up. Every one of, every one of you now, every one of you that's part of this ministry and believes, you know that you're in you're part of Hebrews 11 now, don't you? Go read it for yourself. Read it and understand who you are in Christ now. You're one of us. <laughs> you're a child of faith. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Cool.